After the SEC's lawsuits against Binance, Coinbase, and other platforms for not registering properly as securities exchanges, regulators are coming off. There's at least a perception that they're unfriendly to crypto in the United States. According to our next guest, other countries uh, are rolling out the welcome mat for crypto, with players in Japan, Hong Kong, and Europe making an effort for crypto to be able to operate uh, in their countries. Join us now, Emily Parker, uh, Coindesk Executive Director of Global uh, Content. Emily, uh, you know, a casual observer would say, yikes, FTX, you know, there, there are some things going on, Binance, uh, we need some regulation. Uh, but, but then I think the, the Coinbase suit, that almost seemed gratuitous. And even a reasonable person would say, all right, something's happening here that just goes beyond try, trying to protect uh, investors. If I got that, is that a, a, a legitimate uh, viewpoint? Well, you know, it's funny. If you go to the SEC website, there are so many different cases. So it's not just Coinbase. I mean, they've they've been charging so many different companies. Now, I think the issue here is not so much whether it's gratuitous or not gratuitous. It's about the lack of clarity. Like this is something that crypto advocates have been complaining about for years, this, this concept of regulation by enforcement, which is that a lot of these a lot of the regulatory decisions are being played out in court, as opposed to actually having a framework where people know what they can and cannot do. Now, all these lawsuits are kind of different. You know, the SEC is accusing Binance of very different things that they're accusing Coinbase of. But I think, you know, if we look at Ripple, for example, you know, Ripple, there was just a partial victory in that in that case. And Ripple has been fighting that for years. And, you know, again, it would have been better if there had been some sort of clarity from the outset that didn't leave these issues to be decided in courts, because not every company has the time and resources to do that. Do we want to be the global leader? It, it, because if we do, you point out uh, Hong Kong, Singapore, there are places that, that seem to be uh, putting out a welcome mat. And we're not, can we actually lose our, our ability to lead the world? And, and would we would that be a, a, a negative for the United States? Well, I guess it depends on who you ask. I think if you ask the SEC, I don't think they're that concerned about, um, or at least Gary Gensler doesn't seem particularly concerned about crypto projects leaving the United States. But yes, the, the, the issue is that even if the SEC were to continue its current approach, which I think most people agree is relative, or most people in the crypto industry agree is relatively inefficient, there's now a lot of other places for crypto projects to go. So Dubai, Singapore, we've been hearing about these places for years, but there's kind of new players in town or revived players in town. As you mentioned, Japan is one example. Um, Japan, and let's be clear here, Japan Japan is very strict. It is not an easy place to do crypto business, but it's very clear. And so Japan kind of had a victory of its own when FTX co collapsed and everyone, people all over the world were, were really worrying about it. Japan was very calm because FTX Japan was one of the only places that were able to give money back to their users. And this was a victory for Japanese regulation, which prevents commingling of assets, basically. There's separation of assets. So, you know, an exchange can't just like dip into the, the fund, into customer funds and do what they want with it. Japan also has very strict rules about, you know, how crypto is stored. A uh, majority of crypto and exchanges needs to be stored in something called called wallets, which is a more secure form. So this is, it's very strict. It's not easy, but it's, 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 it's allowed for protection of investors. Hong Kong also quite recently has, you know, has been rolling out a new licensing regime for exchanges. Europe now, um, you know, 27 member states will have a licensing regime for crypto firms. So again, what's interesting about this is these are not Wild West jurisdictions. These are jurisdictions with very clear, very difficult requirements. But I think for some projects, they'd still rather deal with that rather than make a mistake and spend years and millions of dollars fighting it out in a court. If you assume that, that actually crypto is here to stay, I mean, there, for a long time, I could see why banks or even the U.S. government in terms of being disintermediated or disrupted. I mean, we have the reserve currency of the entire world. Uh, nobody needs, if you're in that position, uh, where you benefit from that. You don't need a, a, a rival or an upstart or anything. So I can understand that. But aren't we beyond that now to where it's, uh, you know, if you can't beat them, you got to at least regulate them uh, at this point. I don't, I don't know what the hesitancy is. Are they still hoping it just goes away eventually? It's a great point. It's a great question. And I think you're right. I mean, regardless of if you like crypto or not, it does seem like it's here. And so, you know, I think you could make the argument that the SEC's approach is actually 
less protective of investors in the United States because of exactly that, because crypto is here. And as we saw, some of the crypto exchanges that have done great damage, for example, FTX, was not even in the U.S. That doesn't mean that it can't hurt U.S. investors. So, yes, I think you could make the argument that, you know, you can't just sort of turn your back on this. Another interesting data point is that Bitcoin is up, I think, over 80 percent since the beginning of the year, despite the string of SEC lawsuits, which, again, is another data point that shows that the U.S. is not entirely calling the shots here. If the U.S cracks down on crypto. And there's definitely, we're hearing a lot of stories about crypto projects avoiding the U.S. entirely. It's not stopping people from investing in Bitcoin. What are the chances that you saw that uh, the former chairman of the CFTC, uh, Timothy uh, Mossad, and, and uh, Jay Clayton, former SEC chair, uh, said that the, the two agencies should create a self-regulatory organization and not wait around that comes up with basic structures? Is there any w way that that could see the light of day? I, I can't imagine. Yeah, again, exactly. So, you know, I think I, I know the op-ed that you're referring to. There's a lot of really good suggestions in there. They're actually quite incremental. They're quite reasonable. They're not making these, like, dramatic dramatic, dramatic recommendations. But the problem is, is that is there even any kind of political will in Congress to do anything? And I don't see much evidence that there is. I think the U.S. was really burned by the whole FTX collapse. I think Sam Beckman fried you know, positioned himself as a kind of spokesperson for the industry. He made all kinds of political donations. And I think a lot of people in Washington got burned. And my impression is, at least before the election, there's just not a lot of will in Washington, with a few exceptions. There's definitely a handful of exceptions there are people in Congress who are, you know, really trying to change things. But I just don't think that there's a lot of will or just effort in Congress to make this a priority. And, and they'd kind of rather stick with the, the status quo.